Hello, in this video we're working on Chapter 4, Exercise 4, and I know a number of people have been struggling with this one, I think partially because they see the fact that they need to create four files instead of maybe one or two. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through this real methodically and hopefully you'll see a little bit of clarity after we're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take on these tasks one at a time. I'm going to be using uh, JGRASS to do my authoring. But the first thing I'm going to do is read the problem and it says, create a class named blood data that includes fields that hold blood type, and the four blood types are, and they list them, and an RH factor uh, for positive or negative. Create a default constructor that sets the fields to um, O and plus, and an overloaded constructor that requires values for both fields. Include get and set methods for each field. All right, so let's start to build that, and I'm going to try to do this very methodically for you. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is create a new file. And we'll start out, and they did tell us to call it blood data. So I'm going to call it public, and that's got to be lowercase p. I'll get an opening curly brace in there and a closing one. Then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, since we're building a class here, I have to remember we're not going to need a main method. We just need to do gets and sets, some constructor methods, and set some private data fields. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the, uh, the data fields. And if you look at the problem description, um, it includes fields that hold a blood type. And notice it's not indicating that we need to make a separate one for each, just one for blood type and one for RH factor. Now, those are both going to end up being strings because we're working with characters here. So we're just simply going to say private string blood type. And we're not presenting a value, we're leaving that blank. And then we're going to do private string, and we'll do RH factor. Uh, then the one thing that we're going to need is to have gets and sets for each one of the, um, the data fields. So let's do that next. Let's start by creating a set method for blood type. So we're going to create a public. Okay, during uh, the short pause that I took here, I, I thought I had hit record, but apparently I hadn't. But I'm going to show you the work I did in the interim. Um, basically, uh, what I did is I went ahead and I set set and get, get methods for each of the two data fields. So I have a set and a get for blood type, and then I have a set and a get for the RH factor. Each one of those is going to re receive a string for the set, and that simply receives the string and then sets it to each of the appropriate variables. And then the gets, of course, return whatever value that we set. The other thing that we needed to do was to create uh, a default constructor that presets um, O and a plus, so the blood type, and whether it's positive or negative. And that can be done a couple of different ways. And what I did is I, I wanted to show you two methods. And, and one is uh, the one you'd probably anticipate, and that is where we just take the data field and set it to the value. And that's absolutely fine if you do it that way. Uh, but I also wanted to show you the value of using the keyword uh, this. So let me demonstrate that for you. So the one that accepts the overloaded constructor um, we are going to use, once again, the class name. And then we're going to be sending two strings in. And I'm going to use the same variable names I did before. And then inside uh, this particular constructor, um, we are going to actually do pretty much these two steps but we're not going to hard code the values. So I'm going to get rid of the comment marks here.
So instead of setting it, yeah, I guess this is supposed to be a plus. So instead of hard coding those values, we're going to set them to match these variable types that are in the parameters. So this is going to be B type and our H. Now, the whole concept of using the this statement instead of this approach is that when I refer to this, I'm re actually referring back to the class uh, itself. So what, what would happen is since this is pointing back to itself, we're sending in two parameters. So instead of coming to blood data, it's coming to blood data that's accepting the overload. So in essence, it sends back to itself and does it does the work here. So that's just a different approach. Like I said, you don't need to do it that way. This approach is just fine. So you can pick uh, one approach or the other. All right, so let's go ahead and save that file. I'm going to click Save here. Make sure it's in my Unit 4 folder. And we're going to call it blood data.java. And just making sure all my syntax is good. And then I'm going to go ahead and compile it, make sure all the there's no errors. Oh, and it looks like I do have one error. And let's see, line 37. Oh, that's a parenthesis and not a curly bracket. Right, let's try that again. Okay, and this time it's okay, so we'll, let's go ahead and save it. Now we'll move on to the next file that we need to create. It says, create an application named test blood data that demonstrates each method works correctly and save the application as test blood data. Now, this is work that I've already completed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring the file over and show it to you. So I'm going to create a new Java file, and paste in the code, and then you can take a real quick look at what I did here. And the first thing I did is I created you know, the whole show the program, created a main method, and then I'm instantiating two objects based on blood data. So you can see I use the keyword blood data, give each one of them a name and then I'm using the default constructor which sends in no arguments and then I'm using the overloaded which does send in two arguments. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a method that's just going to display the output. All right, And that is just going to do a system out print line, a little string of text and then for each one of the values, so each one of the, excuse me, the objects that we send in, we would send it in, we would get the blood type and get the RH factor. Now, we're doing that by virtue of sending it in through this little statement. That statement accepts um, blood data basically as a data type, so it's an object being passed in, and we're giving it the generic name of B. All right, so then we go through it, we're going to display those two constructors so you can see what they're doing at that point. Then once again we're going to go in and we're going to take one of those two, so B1, and then we're going to set the blood type to AB. So we're just going to send that object in and then instead of using no constructor we're actually setting a value for blood type and our H factor and then displaying it again. So let's go ahead and compile that file and save it. And you can see that's OK. And then we can go ahead and run it. And you can see the default went in. And those are the default values, O positive. Uh, for the second object, we have an A and a minus, so A negative. So that came out that way. That's being sent in. Uh, with the construction of the object. And then finally, we remember, we change those two for B1, and then we do the output, and you can see it's AB negative. All right, let's move on to the second part of the assignment. And in this one, it says, create a class named patient that includes an ID number, age, and blood data. So really what's happening here is we're using a couple of typical data fields that would seem to be integers and then instead of using you know some other data type we're actually taking the object that we created once again the class and using it as a data type within this new class. 
So let's take a look at how uh, that lays out. So I'm going to do a little copy pasting here for the sake of efficiency. And of course, you can always pause the video and type the stuff in. Uh, but we are going to create the public class called patient. Let's uh, get a closing curly brace in there. And then we're going to set up some the three private data fields that they were mentioning. So if you remember, they have uh, a string for ID, and int for age, and I had originally thought I would put it in as an int, but apparently I chose to do it as a string. Uh, not much of a difference, really, uh, in this case. And then we're setting up the class, the pre-created class blood data, as the data type and calling the object within blood data. Let's go back to the instructions. It says provide a default constructor that sets the ID number to zero and the age to zero and the blood data to zero and plus. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to paste this in and you might have a couple questions as to why I paste it in like this. So remember the instruction said this up a little bit. Provide a default constructor, so that's no arguments being passed in. And we're set the ID number to zero, which I did, the age to zero, and then um, blood data to zero and plus. So now the question is how, how exactly is that doing those particular things? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually add to this uh, age, because apparently I left that out before. And that age is going to be 0. And then we're creating the new uh, object here, blood data equals new blood data. All right. Now, remember when we're creating new blood data, if we send nothing in, it is automatically going to set uh, it to type O positive. So that we don't need to actually hard code those. The other thing that we need to do is we need to have an overloaded constructor that provides values for each field. So this is actually going to be very similar. Um, in fact, I'm going to paste it in and you'll see what I mean. All right, so here's the overloaded version where we're going to send in a string for ID, uh, age as a number, blood type, and our age factor. Now, one approach that we can use, this is once again a demonstration of the keyword this, is I can say this ID, and what does that refer to? It refers to the one that's within this class. So it refers to this, and then age does as well. So we're just going to receive those in, and we're going to set them to the data fields. And then once again, we're going to do blood data, and we're going to do the same thing we did on the previous portion of the assignment, and that is to send in two values to the overloaded method in the other class. Uh, with the rest of it, we're just going to do getters and setters, for each one of the data fields, and I'll paste those in as well, and you can see what they look like. Let's move this section out of the way so you get a clearer view. All right, so you can see for ID, I have a get. Now the get sends the value back. The set brings it in and sets it. Same with age. Same with blood data, but uh, with blood data, um, look at the blood type, or excuse me, the data type is blood data for the one that we're receiving. Um, and that's, in essence, the whole uh, class. So it's not really that complicated. It looks like a lot of lines of code, but it's just simple logic uh, for the most part. And um, here's a snapshot of all the gets and sets. And here's the constructor function, or methods and the data fields. Um, the last thing that we need to do is create 
um, an additional file and that's going to be one that's going to be able to test everything. Uh, so we're going to create an application that demonstrates that each method works correctly. Now I will say that you can approach that in a number of different ways uh, too. Um, the, you know, you can test basically different approaches. Now what I'm doing here is I just want to do like a bare bones test on each one. So I created uh, this code here. So we once again have a main method and we also created a method that will just display things. And this time instead of just getting two values back, we're going to get the ID, get the age, get the blood type, and get the RH factor. Now up top here, we're going to be creating two new instances of patient, one with no arguments going in. So that's going to take all the, the default values. And really what's smart here is I'm noticing I didn't compile this, so I better compile it just to make sure. And it compiled just fine, thankfully. Um, okay, so we're going to create two new instances, and when you look at that, Remember, age and ID are preset. Blood data is its own default constructor. Um, the next line, we send in all four values, and those will get set here. All right, so um, we then also create a new blood data type. So now we're, we're showing that we can pull from patient, but we can also pull from bl blood data, and there we're sending in a positive and a negative. So we're really, in essence, testing this class file and this class file from this one. Um, then we go ahead and we do a display of P1 and P2. Um, then we do sets for P1 for ID and age. We then change the blood data uh, B to AB. Uh, and negative, and then we do a set on the P1 for blood data and then display that. So if you want, you can go through and do a little predictive uh, output and see what it's going to do, but in, in essence, we've covered every possibility in just this little bit of code. And yours might look completely different, but one thing you do want to make sure at the very least is that you test these two scenarios, that you display both, and then you try to do a set with an additional display. Some of this extra blood data stuff, I mean, that's kind of extras just to show you that it can happen. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and run it, and you can uh, take a quick look. We will need to save. Picks up the name automatically. It cleared just fine with the compiler. And then you can see um, the remainder here. So really, each patient's got its own ID number. So notice if we have nothing sent in. It, it says patient 0, age 0, blood type is O positive. That's the default for all the values. Then we have one where we sent in each one of the values. You can see the output. And then we had this other one where we did a little tweaking on those values, and that's the output for that one. So that wraps exercise 4, and hopefully you found that of some value, and good luck on your coding.